This is probably one of the brightest days we've seen in Chiang Mai in several weeks. But that doesn't mean that everything in Chiang Mai is sunshine and rainbows. So let's talk about the title. The title of uh, this particular video is How We Cope with the Rainy Season in Chiang Mai. Initially, it was gonna be how we survive the rainy season here in Chiang Mai. But in all honesty, we don't survive the rainy season. There are people that live here, the locals, that really have to survive this here. And from what I understand, I'm um, talking to other people, this has been one of the heaviest rainy seasons in a while. So if I was to talk about surviving the rainy season, I'm fortunate that I come from a Western country where um, I received a pension from my job. And I'm in a position, it's not a whole lot pension. You know, I was a cop. It wasn't a whole lot of a pension. But if something was to happen here, and by the house that I'm renting became flooded, we lost all our clothes or whatever, I know I can start over. And that makes me humble and grateful because I know a lot of people don't have that. But um, by the same token, we still have to cope with the rainy season and I'm gonna explain what that's about. Talk about what I mean by being able to cope in the, in the, uh, in the rainy season. There's something called seasonal affective disorder. And I'm gonna show you a little bit of the waterfall. I am at Huey Cow, Huey Cow Waterfall. I think I pronounced it right. Let me show you a little bit of this here. But it's a beautiful day right here. So this seasonal affective disorder um, is a type of depression that happens you know, seasonally. It's usually you know, the fall and the winter. And, um, but you know what? It happens over here, studies have shown it happens over here during rainy seasons. And for my friends and lives in cold environments, North America, um, some of the upper states, Canada, I got friends that live in Canada, but even Seattle during the rainy season, you could be overwhelmed with a type of depression. Now they say that some of the symptoms include you know, decreased energy or fatigue, um, people have difficulty concentrating. There's changes in sleep and appetite. And then there can even be physical aches and pains. But what's really scary is that there are even thoughts of death and actual suicides during this period of time. So it is something that's really serious um, to deal with this right here. So the question may come by is, well, how do you guys deal with that? And what I found is, first and foremost, whoever you're coming over here with, your spouse, your partner, your significant other, whatever the case may be, you must not only like them, I'm sorry, you must not only love them, you must also like them. <laughs> because you can find yourself inside for a very long time um, together because of the storms. And I say that kind of tongue in cheek, but it's true. So the way Dana and I cope with the rainy season is we get out. And sometimes getting out means that we uh, pack our computers in a bag, we go find a coffee shop, and we just work. Then we'll take a break and we'll just chat, but it changes the environment that we're in. We're not sitting at home the whole time. But also, this depression this seasonal affective disorder is a type of depression. So with a lot of depressions, what, what doctors say, um, psychiatrists say, is to move your body. Well, how do you do this if you're stuck inside during the rainy season? Well, Dan and I, we both join a gym during the, uh, the burning season, or the smoky season, as it's called sometime. And we will go and get on the treadmill and we will you know, get some exercise and move our bodies. And you'll be surprised when you start releasing endorphins because you're moving 
that helps out a lot. And so we probably go walk, rain or shine, about three to four days a week. And I also play pickleball. That keeps me busy, that keeps me moving. So another question you may have is, Fred, you know, um, I have a motorbike here. So how do, I, how do I go out in the rain and do this? Well, we're lucky that we have a car and we can, we can get in the car and we can drive where we want to be at and make that happen. But if you don't have a car, I did some research and there's a lot of companies out there, but um, I contacted the company Budget Catcher. I'm not sponsored by them, it's not a promotional thing, but we rented a car for a few days. Um, and we have a car, but the Honda Fit, I'm sorry, the Honda Jazz, which in the United States is the Honda Fit pretty much. It sits kind of low, and so we didn't want to deal with the flooding or anything like that. So we rented a 2024 Toyota Yaris. And it's a big car, it's not like the small Yaris you may see or you're familiar with in the United States. It's a, it's a good sized car, so we did rent that. And that costs 500 baht a day. We're talking 12 to 15 dollars a day, maybe even cheaper you can get a, a car to rent and do some things with. And it's funny because I was in the States back in June and I rented a car and we're talking about 700 dollars for the week to rent a car. And what I liked about, what I liked about uh, the place we rented from, they didn't try to upsell, you know, all these added stuff going on. And there was a 5,000 bot deposit also, which wasn't bad. So I'm very happy with that. So you've been able to rent a car where you can get out, you can do things, um, that's really gonna help. But I also, um, I used to feed dogs um, every other day but now it's gotten to the point where every evening I go out and I feed the dogs. And you want to talk about a sense of purpose, you know, and the see because they have to deal with this also. A lot of them can go and find shelter at the temples or some other kind of structure. But being able to get out and go feed the dogs every evening uh, when I take my dog for a car ride, she loves that too, um, really helps us deal with this. So it's something real that, you know, you're going to have to deal with um, if you decide to move over here or even visit during the rainy season. I just wanted to give you a look at this waterfall. I hope this video uh, does it justice. But there's a few people out here today and they're really enjoying this. The air is very clean right now. It's a little cooler now that there's no rain today. So uh, my wife and I are really enjoying our time out here. So I really just wanted to talk to you about, you know, the flooding has an impact both financially and, you know, personal lives, um, of course, and unfortunately. But, you know, there's things like depression you may have to deal with during seasons like this um, that you should be prepared for. And I just wanted to share that with you. So this is the point where I usually say, um, if you got any value uh, from this video, if you're so inclined, uh, there's a link to buy me a coffee. But today I want to say this to you. There is someone somewhere or some organization somewhere that could use your help. Right now Florida is going through a, a pretty category 4 hurricane is on the outskirts yet it's affecting a lot of Floridians there. And there are so many places that are dealing with so much. So look around where you live at. See if someone can, can help from just that $10 donation, that $5 donation, whatever it is. And as always, I love you. Thank you for being here. And I will see you in the next video.